Okay, so we're just starting real quick today with a review sheet. If you're watching this on the video, uh, you can print this sheet off from Canvas. So go ahead and do that. Take two minutes, fill it out, print as many as you want. Okay, so here we go. Everybody remind me, the negation. When I negate a statement, what happens to the truth values? Perfect, flips, becomes false and true. Perfection, great. We're one for one. The conjunction is the and statement. When I go and evaluate the and statement, when is the and statement true? Both are true. So only this first one's true, the rest are all false. Okay, fantastic. The disjunction over here on the end, when is the disjunction true? When one or the other is true. So true, true, true. The only one that's false is when they're both false down there at the bottom. The conditional statement, when is the conditional statement false? There's only one time. Both of you got it, yes. When it's true, then false. This is when you met the condition, okay? So the example I gave in class is you got a 95 on the test and then you did not get the consequence you were supposed to. You did not get the A, okay, for whatever reason. So that means that the conditional statement did not function properly. That's why that one's false. The other ones, true than true, false than true, false than false, they are all true statements. And last but not least, the biconditional. The biconditional. When is the biconditional true? Did we see? Yes, when they're the same, because it has to go both ways. Perfection. What great job. So true if and only if true, that one's true. False if and only if false, that one's true. When they have the same truth value. You get a true statement with the by conditional because it has to go both ways. And so then the reason, just, just to remind us, because that was the last thing we did, the reason that this first one, uh, true than false, or true if and only if false, the reason this one's false is because reading it from left to right, I have the true than false statement. And we just saw in the previous table that that was false. And then with the second one, because the by conditional is going both ways, left and right, Okay, so then this one, I start over here and I read it from right to left. I go true, then false this way. That's false. That's why the by conditional has to have the same truth value for both statements. All right, that's a worthy thing to do a couple more times before you take your test. Okay, we're not going to do it in class again, but grab a couple extra pages if you need to. Uh, feel free to help yourself. I want you to feel super confident going into the test that we're going to have uh, whenever that, that is coming up. I think it's not... I don't think we have our test. Yeah, we have our test next week. It's a week from today. Okay, so here we go. We left off in this section. We're almost done with section 3.4. We left off talking about equivalent statements. So just refresh my memory because it's been uh, 48 hours. What makes statements equivalent? How do I know? Perfect. They have the exact same truth values when you do the truth table. And if you look to the front page, if you were here last time, we did a couple of examples of that. We, we investigated something called De Morgan's Laws, uh, which is something you can take to the bank. You never have to prove those. Uh, if you were not here, that's all on video and you can review that uh, and get caught up. So we are going to now do two other uh, equivalences that you can take to the bank. You don't ever have to prove these. You can just remember them if you so choose. So the next one involves our conditional statement. So what I've done here is I've just defined two simple statements, just the shortest statements I could possibly think of. So P is the statement it rains. Q is I get wet because it's raining on me. Okay, so here we go. I'm, we're going to write these four statements. They are related to each other and two of them are equivalent. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. So the conditional statement, we know what the conditional statement is. We've done this a whole bunch of times, but what is P then Q? How would I write that in words? I'm sorry, what'd you say? It's an if then statement, yes. So if what? Yep. Perfect. Excellent, well done. Just pausing to give you a moment to write. I don't want anybody to get behind on this. 
uh, because this is not a super uh, complicated thing we're going to talk about. It's just an extension of what we're talking about. Okay, so a, a statement that's related to a conditional statement is called the converse. Okay, the converse, notice what the converse is. If, we, if you simply flip the order of the statements. So in words, what would the converse of if it rains, then I get wet, what would the converse be? Perfect. If I get wet, then it rains. Now, a lot of times we use these statements interchangeably. And what we're going to see here in a minute is we're going to try to decide which, which ones are the equivalent ones. Okay, so are, do these two mean the same thing? That's a question. Okay, we don't know yet. We are going to, that's going to be the last thing we do here in just a minute. Okay, so then the next statement that's related to our conditional statements called the inverse. So notice the inverse, instead of changing the order, I've changed the negation. Okay, so I still have P, Q, I still have P, then Q in that order, like the original conditional statement, but now I've negated them both. So what would I say for this one in words? It'd be if what? Perfect. If, if it doesn't rain. Then I don't get wet. Great job. And last but not least, the last statement that's related to the conditional statement is called the contrapositive. Okay, so you just break that up into two words. I know it's a little longer. Contrapositive. Okay, so the contrapositive does both of those things. It not only changes the order of the statements, it changes the, the truth value. It negates both of them. So in this case, what would it be? If what? Then it doesn't rain. Okay, great. If I don't get wet, then it doesn't rain. Okay, excellent work, good job. So here's what I want you to do. This serves as a very nice review point for us. Okay, I want you in the truth table that I've given you down below, I want you to do the truth table for each of those four statements. Okay, and I want you to determine which one is equivalent to the original conditional statement. So what I would recommend, please, is your first column that you do here, do the original conditional statement, if P, then Q. And then we're going to put an asterisk under it. And then I want to know which other statement, one of those other three is equivalent to the conditional statement. It means the exact same thing.
So first thing I asked you to do, if you're still working, keep working. Again, I know we all work at different paces and that's all good. So don't, uh, don't beat yourself up if you're not quite done yet. So the first thing I asked you to do is just do the conditional statement. We already reviewed this. That was the very first thing we did. So this is no different. The conditional statement is false under only one condition. And that is when I start with true, then false. Okay, that is the false statement. The other ones are all true for my conditional statement. So that is the truth value for the conditional statement. My question to you is which of the other three of the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive, which one of those is equivalent? So we're gonna do the truth table for each of those. So the next one is the converse. The converse is simply what I get when I flip the order of these two statements. So I'm going in the reverse. So I'm gonna look at Q then P. So this one is true then true. So that's still true. So, so far so good. Then the next one is false then true. That's still true. The third row is gonna be the false one, true then false. Okay, so that is false. And we can see here, false then false. We see that when I just flip the order of my two simple statements, then I create a different statement. So the conditional and the converse, they are different. Okay, so not equivalent. Remember, equivalent means they have to be exactly the same in every way. Okay, so I know they have both, they both have three trues and one false, but they're in a different order. Okay, so that makes them not equivalent. Okay, well, we'll keep going. I told you one of these statements was going to be equivalent. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my squigglies. I need a squiggly P and a squiggly Q to do the other two statements. So P is true, true, false, false. You already told me when we reviewed that the negation just reverses the values. So I am doing that right now. So the next one's the inverse. The inverse doesn't change the order of the original statements. It changes the truth value. It negates them. So I'm going to do squiggly P, then squiggly Q. So I'm going in the very order that they're given right here. So false, then false. Remember, the only time the conditional statement is false is when it goes T, then F. So I have F, then T. The next one is T, then F. And then T, T. There we go. So I asked which one's equivalent to the original statement. Once again, the original statement was T, F, T, T. This is not the same order, so it is not equivalent. Now, you might notice that the inverse is the same thing as the converse, and that is a true. That is true, and I'll tell you why that is in a minute. But first, before we do that, let's finish off with the contrapositive, where I flip the order and I flip the truth value of both statements. And so now I'm taking these two blue columns. I'm now going backwards, so I'm going to put a little arrow above them. So the first one is false, then false. That is fine. The next one is true than false. Okay, so when I look at it this order, I start with true, I go to false, that is the false one. False than true, that's fine. True than true, that's fine. And notice the contrapositive has the same truth value. So which is statement is equivalent to the conditional statement? The contrapositive. So that's a little pro tip when you're doing like an English essay. If you, if you need another sentence to get some extra words in there and you've used an if then statement, then just flip that statement around and negate both. And you're saying the same thing and you're using more words. So there you go. So that's why that's also why we see that the converse and inverse are, are uh, equivalent because they are contrapositives of each other. The statements have been flipped and the negation has happened for both. Okay, so anytime you have a conditional statement, if you anytime you have a conditional statement, if you flip the order of the statements and also flip the truth values, you have created a equivalent statement. So what we're going to do here with example seven, I'm going to give you a moment to do this. I've given you this statement. If the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are parallel. That is a conditional statement. So I just want you to please write the contrapositive. If you need to write it out in symbols first, that is fine. I will do that. Or if you are capable of just flipping the order and flipping the negation, then do that straight away. That is fine by me either way.
Okay, so again, if you could go straight away to the contrapositive, I'm good with that. But I know we all learn at different paces. We, some of us need more visualization than others, and there's nothing wrong with that. So what I've done over here is I've defined the two simple statements. P is the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Q is the opposite sides are parallel. So symbolically, this is P then Q. If the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are parallel. So the contrapositive, this is the thing to remember. Okay. The contrapositive is you flip the order and you flip the negation. So I'm going to flip the order and flip the negation. So it's squiggly Q, then squiggly P. I flip the order, flip the negation. These two things mean exactly the same thing when you say them. So now I'm going to write that in words. And again, if you could have just done this right away, that's fine. So the, this statement now is if the opposite sides, I'm just going to abbreviate, if the opposite sides are not parallel, then squiggly P, the quadrilateral, again, I'm abbreviating, Abbreviating, the quadrilateral is not a parallelogram. So I'm just going to underline the two knots there. I made the negation and I flipped the order of the statement. So there we go. I've done both of those things. So we've gone through two equivalences that you can just take to the bank. You never have to prove to me. You just can go ahead and use them. De Morgan's laws, remember, were like a distributive property for the negation. Just got to remember to flip that sign in, that's a, a between your statements. And then the contrapositive is equivalent to the conditional statement. There is one other. There is one other equivalence that you don't have to uh, you don't have to uh, worry about proving to me. And the conditional statement is actually equivalent to a form of the disjunction. So this is called the, it doesn't get a clever, fun name. It's just called the conditional disjunction equivalence. You don't have to remember that, but here's what you can remember, that if P then Q is equivalent to the following thing. What you do is this, you negate the condition, so squiggly P, so I'm just going to draw a little arrow here. You negate the condition or you leave the consequence alone. So I'm just going to draw a little arrow. Those two statements are the same just for time's sake. I'm not going to have you do a truth table to show it, but you're welcome to if, if, you're, uh, if you're just very fascinated by this and you want to do that when you get home. That's totally a good thing to do. Okay. But if you start with a conditional statement, then you can negate the condition and leave the consequence the same and join them with an or. Those two things would mean the exact same thing. So here is our last problem for this section, and then we're going to be done with it, and we're, we're going to get kind of to the main section for this whole unit. So what we're going to do is this. This is exercise eight. We're going to take this in a couple different steps. By the way, did everybody get that written down? I know I just slid it off the screen. Sorry about that. Not meaning to, uh, not meaning to go too fast. Okay, I'm going to... Just slide off the screen again. Okay, so exercise eight. I've given you, uh, I've given you an original statement. It is not true that x is greater than zero and x is negative. I've given you three derivations of that statement, numbered one, two, and three. What I would like you to do is first, let's go through and write each of those symbolically. I'm going to give you 90 seconds to write each of those four statements symbolically, please.
Okay, so I've defined the simple statements for you. P is X is greater than zero. Q is X is negative. And so then again, the first thing I asked you to do was write each of these as a uh, as symbols. So the first one says it is not true that. Okay, so hopefully that uh, jogged your memory to say, oh, what that means is I put a squiggly and then some parentheses. Okay, anytime you see it is not true that or it is false that, that's your, that's your next thing you do. And then inside the parentheses, I've got X is greater than zero. So I've got statement P and X is negative Q. Okay, so there's our first statement. We've written it symbolically. So when you go through your homework, there's going to be some problems toward the end of this section that is going to give you three. I think they give you three statements. You're going to write each of them symbolically. Then you're going to determine which ones are equivalent. Okay. And there's a couple ways you can do that. And I'll tell you about it in just a minute. The next one. Uh, yes. What's so up? Even if there is a, a, a the parentheses? Yes. Okay. Because that's a great question. There's no comma here, but what tells you the parentheses are these words right in front. It is not true that. So that is telling you everything that comes next is grouped together. So it's another form of grouping. Wonderful question. Okay, so statement one is if, I'm gonna circle the word if, that tells me it's a conditional statement. So I'm gonna draw an arrow. If X is not negative, so if squiggly Q, then X is not greater than zero, so squiggly P. The next one is X is not greater than zero, so squiggly P, or, so this is a disjunction, X is not negative, so squiggly Q. And then last but not least, the one that's down here at the bottom, X is not negative, so that is squiggly Q, and X is not greater than zero, so squiggly P. Okay, so you have two options at this point. Okay, I'm gonna do option two, but I just wanna remind you. So when, when you're on the test and I'll put a problem like this, I'm gonna give you three statements. I'm gonna say which ones are equivalent. If you completely blank on De Morgan's laws and you blank on the contrapositive, okay, don't freak out. Remember, you can always do a truth table. So at this point, you could then do a truth table for these statements and see which ones are the same. Okay, that always works. The truth table always, every time, 365 days a year. But remembering these uh, these three shortcuts I gave you will make the problem a little short. Okay, so we're gonna take we're gonna take advantage of the shortcuts in this problem. So here's what I want you to do for the first statement because none of the other statements have parentheses. For the first statement, I would like you to use De Morgan's law, and because this is a good review, use De Morgan's law and write an equivalent statement when I distribute that squiggly. Okay, so when I distribute the squiggly, I've got squiggly in front of the P, so I'll put that. Then what happens to this and symbol? What do I do with it? Or. You flip it, becomes an or, yes. And then I've got a squiggly in front of the Q. Let's do one more thing, and then we're going to be able to see if any of these are the same. None of the other statements involve an if then. So I'd like you to make your best attempt. Okay, I know that might not get this 100% correct. I want you to use the conditional disjunction equivalence that I just showed you up here, which here's the format. I'm just going to remind you one more time. You take the condition and you negate it. So whatever the condition is, you flip the sign and then you leave the consequence alone and you combine them with a disjunction symbol. So give it an effort. And then if you get it wrong, remember this is an opportunity to learn. OK, 
Okay, so here's the slightly, I wouldn't call it tricky, but here's the part that you just got to pay attention to. So when I use the disjunction conditional equivalence, I'm going to take this condition. I just told you that the pattern was you negate the condition. So what do you get when you negate the condition here? It becomes what? Just Q. Perfect. Excellent. Like hearing lots of voices. Then it's an or statement. And then I told you, you leave the consequence alone. You don't do anything to it. So the, so what, what's, what am I going to write on the other side of the or over here? Squiggly P, you leave it alone. Perfect. Okay. You negate the condition, whatever it is. So since the condition already had a squiggly, when you negate it, two negatives make a positive, and then you leave the consequence alone. Okay. So if you miss that, that's totally okay. Just make a little note to yourself on your page, reminding you so that when this comes up on your homework, you learn. Okay, now we can look at the four different statements. Two of them are the same. Okay, so I'm going to give you a moment. I want you to pick which two of these four. So we got one, two, three, four. Which two of them, or sorry, we're starting with this one. The question was, which one is the same as this one? One of the statements, one, two, or three, is the same as this top statement. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to look and examine, and then we will identify which one's the same. Right, which one do you think is the same as my original statement? Okay, we got a debate. Awesome. Well, let's look. Let's go to number one. I heard number one said. I'm going to disagree, but let's see why. Why is number one different than the original statement? What about it? Yeah, there's no negation in front of the Q. Okay, so there's no negation in front of the Q. It's missing. So number one is not the same because it's missing that squiggly. Do you see that now? We okay? I was looking at the, the first one. That's okay. That's okay. It's, it's... Does not. Remember, what is the only statement? This is another great review question. What's the only statement that the order matters? The conditional. The and doesn't matter. If you say, I like cheeseburgers and French fries, or you say, I like French fries and cheeseburgers, those are both the same statement. Okay, the and statement doesn't matter, or statement doesn't matter, the biconditional didn't matter. The only one the order mattered was the conditional statement. So, okay, let's go to the next one. Number two, is number two, I think I heard somebody say number two, is this the same as the original one? Yes, yes this one is indeed. Let's just real quick go to number three. Why is number three not the same as the original one? Perfect. Good observation. It's an and statement instead of an or statement. So that's why that one is not the same. So it has no bearing on the order. It's because it's a completely different connective. Uh, sure, bring it on. Okay, so it does not matter. The reason I wrote it in that order is that's just the order of the statement. I just went left to right reading. So the first statement here was X is not negative. And so up here, Q is the one that talks about X and being negative. That's why I put Q first on that one. Okay, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter if you rewrite this as squiggly P and squiggly Q, it's not gonna matter. Okay, perfect. Then on this one right here, the reason the Q comes first on this one is because I was just being very intentional of we negate the we negate the condition. So I just did that part first. But once you've done that, the order of these doesn't matter. It's an or statement. Awesome. Great questions. I appreciate that you're processing.